Welcome to our online service today. Living as we do in strange, unprecedented days, it is good that we can meet together by this means to join our hearts and minds in worshipping God, acknowledging that He is in control of all things. We continue our studies in the life of Abraham today. Last week we learned how Abraham and his nephew Lot parted company. Today we learn how God came to Abraham and renewed his promise to him. This week sees our virtual holiday Bible club and after our praise items, Rebecca McKinstry will talk to the boys and girls and then Chris McCann will lead us in praying for the holiday Bible club. But as we meet together, we meet to worship God. And as we do our so, we remind ourselves that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So let us unite together in prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, what a God you are. We acknowledge that you bear our burdens, you comfort us in our distress, that you are the God of compassion and the God of all comfort. Some of us are overwhelmed with burdens of all kinds. Helplessness isn't bad if it drives us to you. Some of us are weighed down by unhealed wounds. Some of us are crippled by bitterness and resentment. Some of us are struggling with the restrictions caused by this pandemic. Thank you for claiming these burdens and taking them from us. Some of us are fearful over the political landscape of our country. Some of us, O oh God, are concerned about uh, all the issues that we face uh, because of this pandemic. We lift these burdens to you reminding us that the throne of heaven is fully occupied and that Jesus is currently the ruler of the kings of the earth and that nothing and no one can alter or annul your plans. Indeed, we know that in all things you work for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. Forgive us and cleanse us from all our sin, we pray and give us grace, wisdom, and power to live and to love to your glory. For we pray in Jesus' merciful and mighty name. Amen.
tasty things to eat. Maybe you've helped someone at home make some buns, or maybe you've made a cake, maybe you've baked some bread, or maybe you've had a go at making things that aren't to be eaten at all, like a slime or play-doh that you might want to play with. Well today I'm in the kitchen because just before I come on here to have a chat with you, I was going to make myself a little snack. But when I went to the fridge, I realised that I'd actually run out of butter. So I hope you don't mind. I'm actually going to make some butter now while I'm speaking to you. So I looked at my fridge and I found some cream. So I'm going to use that to make my butter. So all I need to do is pour a little bit of the cream into this cup. Let's see. That should be enough. Then I'll pop the lid on so I can give it a good shake. So I'll need to make sure it's on very tightly. And hopefully we should have our butter. So we just need to strain off the liquid. Your buttermilk and then we're left with our butter. That will be tasty on some toast later hopefully. Isn't it amazing that we can make things? Whether it's things like this butter, whether it is a cake you've made or some buns and we can put some ingredients together, mix them all together, maybe pop them in the oven and we come out with something great. But do you know what's even more amazing than that? It's more amazing that God has created everything, and I mean every single thing you see around you, from nothing. If you go to the Bible, and you go to the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis, it talks about how God made the earth from nothing. There was nothing there when he started. And all God had to do was speak some words. 
he spoke the world into existence. He said, let there be light and there was light. All it took was God to say a word and the earth was created. The waters came up, the land was created, there were animals, there were plants, there were even stars in the sky and planets, and you and me. God created all the people as well from nothing. Isn't that so cool? And do you know, nothing surprises God. Not one thing. It doesn't surprise him that we could just make this butter from cream. It doesn't surprise him that amazing butterflies that come from tiny little caterpillars. And it doesn't surprise him that everything around us is made up of tiny, tiny little particles that you can't even see. None of that surprises him because he made it all. And in his amazing plan, he has everything laid out before us. Nothing is a shock or a surprise to him. And I invite you to come along this week to our online holiday Bible club. Come along to the Wonder Zone. Because at the Wonder Zone, we're going to be scientists. We're going to do experiments. We're going to find out about this amazing world around us that God created. And we're going to have songs and uh, stories and memory verses and all those things that we love from Holiday Bible Club. But most importantly, we're going to find out about the God who made us, the God who loves us, and this amazing God that is all-knowing and has created everything. Isn't that really cool? I hope you'll come along. Good morning, Glen Gormley family, uh, or afternoon if you're like me and you like to lie in a bit and watch this in the afternoon. But anyway, um, it's a privilege to come on and lead you in prayer this morning, uh, specifically for our young people as they enter a fun-filled week um, of learning, worship and fellowship in the form of Holiday Bible Club. There is lots to pray for um, in the build-up to this, um, so let's just come to God now and, uh, and bring these things to him. Father God, we are so thankful that you are a wondrous, wondrous God, that you have provided us with so much on this beautiful planet. Lord, we thank you for the young people of our church. We thank you for their enthusiasm and that that alone is witness to you. Lord, we use words such as marvellous, wondrous, awesome, beautiful. And these words don't even come close because there is not one word that sums up your generosity, your power, your mercy, and your grace. But Lord, I pray that the young people that are attending Holiday Bible Club this year come to know really who you are and your character. Lord, it's an exciting time as a young person learning more about the gospel and, and really diving in, not passively, but, but really starting to ask questions and just knowing you on a deeper level. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be with them during this time and that no distractions uh, would be had. Lord, we thank you for the technology that is making all of this possible. We thank you for the leaders. We thank you for all of those that have been involved, um, big or small. Uh, we thank you for their part in this. We thank you for the talents and the skills that you have given them um, to serve our church, but also to serve you because you deserve it, Lord. You deserve all the praise, all the glory, all the worship. And Lord, I pray that that would be the case during this week. I pray that any of those kids who are still slightly uncertain of who you are or what the gospel says to be uh, says about being a Christian, we pray that they would come to know that and understand that and bring that into their lives as they go forward, moving into school, be it a, a new school, be it another year. Because Lord, it's not easy being a kid, especially at this time. Being a Christian seems counter-cultural. But in actual fact, Lord, you have provided us the tools to go out and to worship and to witness 
um, to those who maybe are new to faith or have not come to faith, Lord. We trust that all the preparation for this holiday Bible club um, will bring you all the glory and will teach those young people really who you are. We thank you for that, Lord. In your glorious name. Amen. And now Stuart Hacking is going to read God's word for us. The reading today is taken from Genesis chapter 13 and starting at verse 14. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. And we know that God will bless the reading of his word. Two men looked out through prison bars. The one saw mud, the other stars. It's an amazing fact of life, isn't it? That not two people look at the same thing in the same way. Two people can look at a painting and one will like it and the other think it's horrible. Two people can look at the circumstances of life differently. One person can be optimistic, upbeat, full of hope. Another person is pessimistic and is full of doom and gloom. And so too, if we look at life through the eyes of faith, we see things in a different light to the person who looks at life through the eyes of unbelief. This is really the thrust of the passage we want to look together today about Abraham. Abram had lost prime land. The top pasture for feeding his flocks and herds had been taken by his nephew Lot. Moreover, he had lost Lot, whom he probably considered to be a successor since he had no son of his own. But God came to Abram at that time. God came to him to assure him that he had not been abandoned. And God said, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone can count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go and walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. <coughs> Had Abraham lost the best land? Not at all. God was giving him the entire land of Canaan. Had Abraham lost his family for the sake of his discipleship? No, God was going to give him descendants as much as a dust of the earth. What does God command Abraham to do? He said, look up, look up. Look around from where you are to the north and south, to the east and west. Or as another translation has it, lift up your eyes where you are and look north, south, east and west. There are two places in this chapter where we find the idea of looking. The first in his connection with Lot, who looked around and saw the whole Jordan Valley. It was a deep longing, but it grew out of an uncommitted and covetous heart. He wanted the good land. But here the looking is by Abram, who lifted up his eyes at God's command. This was not a longing, it was an obedience. God came to Abram at the end of what had been a testing time after the quarreling between his herdsmen and lots. After the departure of his nephew to the Jordan Valley, and it is as if God's saying, Abram, look carefully in all directions. He needed to see where he was. He needed to take the long view. He needed the refreshment of distant horizons. 
He needed to get life into perspective. God renewed his first promise to Abram and add something more to it. He had promised him previously that he would give us this, him his land, this land to, his, to Abram and his descendants. But on this occasion, he promised that Abram's descendants would be the, the, like the specks of dust on the earth so that no one could count them. This promise came when Abram had no descendants and the best of the land had gone to Lot. It was just then that God called Abram to take the big view, to look in every direction, for one day everything he saw would be his. He had not lost nothing by his generosity to his nephew. He had everything to look forward to. He was called to look up and to move forward in faith. I heard the story of a man who found a hundred pound note on the footpath and spent the rest of his life looking down in the hope of finding another. But we're not to be like that. The Bible brings this message to us again and again. God knows our capacity for looking at the pavement. After a period of conflict or testing, when we have faced difficulties or pressures, when we've gone through a difficult experience, when we are down in the dumps and feel under pressure, God comes to us and is willing to help us to take a fresh look at the height and the depth and the length and the breadth of his love for us. We know that God loves us, but sometimes God has to tell us to lift up our eyes, to lift up our eyes above the immediate circumstances and deliberately think about the blessings he has in store for us. Our Heavenly Father is Lord of the universe, and as Paul puts it, for in union with Christ he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. We need to take the eternal view. We need to look at life from a heavenly perspective. Then all that happens to us and all that we face in life fall into perspective. Being the finite creatures that we are, we cannot take in the full scope of God's plan for us at one glance. Now we focus on that facet, then we look at the other facet, but we need to take the broad view and let our breath be taken away by the sheer scope of it. After a time of testing, after a situation when we feel the pressure, when we are faced with one crisis or another, when we are racked with doubts of one sort or another, when the going is tough, we need to hear God telling us to look up. We need to raise our sights to take our eyes off the problem and look into the face of Jesus. We need to understand our circumstances in the light of the teaching of the Bible. So God commanded Abram, look up. And he commands us to look up. Take your eyes off the pavement and see things from God's point of view. <coughs> Secondly, God tells Abraham to look for his purposes. Look around from where you are to the north and south, the east and west. All the land you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. When God told Abraham to look around him, he was not giving him orders to observe the scenery. He was encouraging him to consider the excitement of partaking in the movement of history that would populate all the land he could see with the children of God. He was not just looking at dust, but at destiny. Through all the region he could see before him, <clears throat> his descendants would live and work and bring the whole area to fruitfulness as they labored in it. So God's challenge to Abram was to look around and see how his purpose would be fulfilled in the months and years ahead. And God invites us to share in the excitement of seeing his purposes fulfilled in the destiny of the people of God. But we need to look up if we are to see that. 
Jesus, he put it this way. You have a saying, four more months and then the harvest. But I tell you to take a good look at the fields. The crops are ripe and ready to be harvested. Jesus and his disciples had stopped at the well of Sychar for a rest. The disciples had gone into the village to buy food, and when they returned, they found Jesus in conversation with a Samaritan woman. The disciples were looking down and worried about the meal they had just bought, and they were frustrated by this Samaritan woman who kept them from it. And Jesus told them, Stop worrying. Take your eyes off your dinner plate and look at the people who even then were beginning to come out to him from the village. He wanted the disciples to enter in with him to the joy of seeing men and women made right with God. He wanted the disciples to find their meat and drink in seeing people entering the kingdom of God. My food is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me to do. Look up and see God working his purpose out in the world. Right across the world today, God is reaping a harvest of souls. He has been doing it ever since that day when Jesus sat at that well. We are so preoccupied with our own little lives, with our families, with our work, and basically with ourselves, that we fail to catch sight of what God is doing in our world. If Abram is the father of the faithful, then those who enter the kingdom of God today in our generation, those who trust in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, they are fulfilling the promise that God made to Abraham that I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth. From that day when God told Abram to look up to this present day, as people turn to God in faith, they are fulfilling his promise to Abram. The danger is that our eyes are on the pavement. We can be so preoccupied with our own little world that we miss the great vision of the purposes of God. We do not grasp what God is doing. Our eyes can be so preoccupied with material things and with personal things that we need to lift them up to see the purposes of God being fulfilled before us. God challenges us to look up, to see what he is doing in the world, to see his purposes being worked out day by day in his church as people are drawn in faith to Christ. Look Get involved in this exciting movement of the Spirit of God across the world and play your part in the destiny of the people of God. Abraham had nothing but a promise to go on that day, but he believed God for a miracle. We can see what God is doing in his church. So let us look up and catch a vision of the purposes of God. That leads us to our third point. Look up in faith. Abraham believed God when he looked across the land. Yet Abraham did not ever see the land becoming his and had to wait a long time for the birth of his son Isaac. But that did not deter him. When God told him to go and look over the whole land with the promise that God would give it to him, When God told him back in chapter 12 to go to the land, he would show him Abram went. And when God told Abram to look around, Abram obeyed. In faith, Abraham responded to the command of God. Sometimes we insist that if we do what God wants, then we must come up with, he must come up with the answer right away. But God does not necessarily do that. God wants to encourage Abram with a broad view, but he also expected Abram to continue to walk forward in faith towards the goal, even when the goal did not seem to be coming any nearer. When we have persevered for years in prayer for someone, and that person seems to be as far from God as when we began, we must pray on. 
when we claim our workplace for God and we believe that he has put us there so that others may come to know him, yet so far no one seems in the least bit interested, we must pray on. When we have sought to gain victory in some sphere of our lives and we have failed again and again and are tempted to give up and feel that God's promises just never will be fulfilled, we must hope on. The present lack of encouragement in no way limits the reality of the original vision. In God's time, he will fulfill his promises. It may not be in the way we expect, but he will fulfill his promises. As he did to Abram, so he does to us. God expects us to keep on going on with him. Let us look up. Let us look at life through the eyes of faith. Let us see God at work fulfilling his purpose in the world. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus in whom our faith depends from beginning to end. Jesus did not give up because of the cross. Think what he went through. How he suffered and died at the hands of sinners. We must not let ourselves become discouraged We must not give up. Let us keep our eyes fixed firmly on what God is doing and what God wants to do through us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the encouragement of your word today, that you are the God who fulfills your promises and that you are the God who fulfills your purposes. Help us to keep our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, that we may see you at work in our world and that we may serve you and fulfill your purpose in our own lives. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
wants me to call him father only a holy god only my holy god come and behold him the one and the only cry out sing holy forever a holy god come and worship the holy god come and behold him the one and the only cry out sing holy forever a holy god come and worship the holy god come and worship the holy May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.